Hi friends! This is the long-awaited second video about my homespun sweater and all the work I've been doing on it. It is finished now, but there's a lot of footage to review. This video is all about uh, spinning and plying and preparing the yarn, mostly for working on the sleeves, and then the ordering of a new batch of fiber because I ran out. This is a long video. I hope you don't find it boring, but if you do, please click away. But some of you fiber people might really enjoy seeing the fiber I ordered from the spinnery store and the different colors and the great prices. So without further ado, let's get started back on that sweater. I was doing a little knitting last night on my sweater. This is how long it's gotten to be from the neck up here to the bottom. It's really getting there. Um, I know the bottom looks kind of brown. It's actually more rusty red colored. I really, really like the yarn here at the bottom. This was all chain plied. Um, everything from here down was chain plied and it's more recently done and I'm a better spinner than I used to be. And so it's a really a lot better yarn than what's on the top. It's okay. But as I said, I was running out of yarn. I didn't really want to use that olive green. It's not, um, olive green is not in the same color family as the stuff in here, but I didn't have a lot of choice. Uh, it's either that or off-white. So, um, so this is my basket of Rolags that I just hand carded. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten maybe? That should be enough. And this will also have to be the ends of the sleeves as well. So I'm going to start spinning today and get a lot of spinning done and see if I can get it chain plied um, in time to maybe do some knitting tomorrow. So this is coming along and I, what I love to do in the mornings is sit in my studio and do something like this and turn on just a long thread of Kate Jackson's YouTube videos from the last Homely House. And just as I was doing this, this hand carding this morning, uh, up pops a, bit, a video from April 2020. So this is you know, a year, almost a year and a half ago. And she was wearing a sweater and it was a top down knit cardigan with raglan sleeves, really so much like this one. It was not the same pattern, but very similar. And uh, it looked really good, and uh, and it, she was using her own homespun, and it was some of her early homespun, and she was talking about the poor quality of the yarn and the crazy colors. I was like, yes, I've got a sweater coming along just like that. So this will be, but she loves wearing it. She put pockets in hers. I probably won't put pockets in mine that, uh, I think I'm past the pocket stage on this, unless I want pockets along the bottom hem. You know what I could do though? I could, if I had enough yarn, I could knit up a little square, little square pocket, and I could sew it with yarn, you know, toward the bottom of just, even just one. A place to keep a Kleenex is all you really need. Um, that, in my opinion, if I have a pocket to put a Kleenex in, then I can put it through the laundry and it stays a Kleenex. No, actually, uh, it keeps me from putting it inside of my shirt somewhere or up my sleeve. It's just ridiculous. So, okay, I'm going to spin. I'm trying to think if there's anything else I wanted to say about this sweater. This is a long sweater video, and I think there'll have to be a second one where I show you the finished sweater, because if I wait until I finish this thing to uh, post this video, it'll be like a month. <laughs> so I'm working as fast, I'm, I'm spinning as fast as I can. Thanks so much for listening to me. Um, and I can't wait to see what this, I, see this is an olive, this is a dark olive green. Like I said, it's just the color isn't showing up on the, but it's a pretty cool combo. The green, that orange, and the dark blue, they, they look okay. All right, let's go, let's go spin. I'm gonna show you a little footage of me spinning, not too much because it's kind of boring too. But I love my spinning wheel and want to share it with you. Here I'm spinning the fiber I just talked about. And then I'm going to switch, well, we're going to fast forward through a good bit of the rest of this because, you know, it was too much spinning footage. And then I'm going to show you um, how I draw the fiber. 
close up and that'll be down uh, in just a second and then after that I'm going to give you a shot from above the spinning wheel so you can see the bobbin and how it fills up okay so let's listen to some pretty music while I spin I've been spinning for almost an hour, I bet, and I've done four roll lags. I had 11 in that basket. Um, I wish the camera would focus. There we go. See all that pretty, that green still isn't what it's supposed to be. Um, and so I'm having so much fun working with this. I really do plan to get through um, all of these roll lags and get it all on the bobbin and get it all plied in one hunk so I can know how much yarn I've got. So we're making progress. I'm gonna This is how life always goes for me. It's not usually that bad though. I'm trying to light a candle. Lighting a candle maybe the other side works better. Ha ah, there you go. I'm really working my way down on this bar company. I think that's what it's called, candle. Um, it's not a fallish scent. Uh, I kind of wish it were, but it's not. I'll, I'm, once I finish this one, I'll move on. Oh, I should tell you, I had the best coupon at Bath and Body Works. It was get a free candle, one of their three wick candles they have so many of now, and now they're selling somebody else's um, three wick candles, and they have a huge selection. And I had to buy anything in the store and get a free candle. I was like, ooh, so I wanted to hit up on that. And then there was also a 20% off your whole purchase, and you could use these together. And then I went to the store and found out they were having a buy two candles, get two for free sale. So I ended up buying two, getting three for free, and getting 20% off of the two that I bought. And even then, those candles are ridiculously expensive. I don't ever buy them um, normally because it's highway robbery what they charge for a candle. And you can get something that smells just about as good at Walmart, but um, just about, but not quite. And they're really kind of elegant. So. Uh, I got five candles and I'm going to give them away at Christmas except for maybe one I'll save for myself. So now I have yet more. I should go through the stuff I've bought for Christmas except for I'm afraid family members might be watching. <laughs> um, anyway, so it's now probably, oh, I'm looking for my phone to find out what time it is, but my phone is right there. You're on the phone. Last time I checked it was 737, so it's probably about 741 by now, not even 8 o'clock. My candle is lit. I'm going to put something nice on my YouTube. It might be Kate Jackson or it might be a little ambient music, ambient music. And then I think I'm going to spin some more of that fiber. I'm definitely going to paint a couple more cards. I'm going back to the farmer's market in two days after being gone for two months. And I have so many cards to sell. Um, okay, so that's what's happening this morning. I'll uh, I'll fill you in later on in the morning with a little timestamp on what I get done. Okie dokie. It is 8.59. I've been 
spinning my Rolex. I have spun all 11 of them now. And that's 11 Rolex. Isn't this insane? That's 11 Rolex. I know I don't make the biggest Rolex in the world, but you would think they would take up more space than that. That just shows what spinning, which is really just twisting, tight, tight twisting of um, yarn fibers does. It compresses them in the most amazing way. Here's the end. Okay. Um, but it is, I just think it's so beautiful. So now I will be plying this and I'll get a little teeny ball of yarn out of that. And I will be um, knitting up some more of my sweater. I've been listening to the Chronicles of Narnia, Winter Woods Music and Ambiance, Relaxing Music with Sounds of Winter. <laughs> That's a long title. It's just a YouTube um, that I found at one point. And it's just ambient music and it's just background music. Now, my brain has probably had enough of that. I might turn on a little um, of a real, a real YouTube video. All right, I'm going to go ply, chain ply. I'll come back and show you what this looks like when it's done. I'm um, going to do some painting today. I'm really, really thinking it's time to warp this up. I'm just really, it's preying on my brain since I made that last video about it. Okay, so we're progressing through our morning. Okie dokie. So it doesn't look like much. It looks kind of browny, greeny. It's actually really pretty yarn. The orange and the cranberry and the blue really pop out more. Anyway, so here it is on the Nitty Knotty. I've tied it off and I'm going to go wash it. This is the last of my homespun, really, that I can use on this sweater. I had forgotten... Of course, I still have the pink. I haven't done anything with that yet. But I've forgotten about this. Um, what did I say this was? Wensley Dale or something? I don't know what this was. This is the scratchier stuff. This stuff is already blended. Can you see all the colors in there? Um, I haven't used it either. So I really, I have a, still a good bit of uh, the fiber I got from the spinnery store, but the colors I want in my sweater, I've pretty much used up. So I'm going to go uh, put this in some water, get it wet, gently squeeze it out, and then I'm going to thwack it on the door jam. which what you do is you hold it in a long piece and you bap it really hard about four times um, to set the twist, and then it won't all twist up and act crazy when you take it off, and then we'll dry it. Okay, the next step on this homespun sweater is to move, I want to work on the sleeves. So I have to move the stitches of the body off of my ten and a half size needles because I need these. They're, apparently, these are the only ten and a halves I own, which I think is not true, but I cannot find um, my others. So, um... It's important not to try to move your stitches onto a larger size needle, so I picked another circular needle that's a lot. That's probably a seven or something. I don't know. It's just to hold these stitches, and I'm going to put a little, I don't know what you call them, little stitch stoppers. Let me see if I can find mine. I'll look for them here for a second. I'm not sure if this is what this is supposed to be, but this is what I'm going to use it for. Um, and that'll stay on there and keep those stitches from coming off. And then I'll find another one. These are in sizes. I don't know. I have some other ones. I'm not sure where they went. But I want to make sure these live stitches don't fall off. And the smaller circular needles um, are not as long. The cable is not as long as my ten and a halfs that I've been using. And I've had to really cram the body of this sweater onto the ten and a half, so I know it's going to be a really tight fit. So that that uh, stitch stopper, I'm, that's what I'm going to call it, is a stitch stopper. I have no idea what it's called. Um, I think I knew, but you know, a lot of the things we've had in our heads have flown away. Okay, so I'm almost to the end of this. This is I'm I'm ready to go back and do a little more work on the sleeves. I don't like not knowing whether I have enough yarn for my sleeves. So I want to see how far down I can get. I need to look at the pattern and see what it tells me to do. 
um, it the instruction is to do the sleeves in tubes. In other words, like in the round, knit in the round. Okay, let's see if we can find another one. That one works. Okie dokie. So that is safe. So here are my ten and a half. Oh, and I wanted to show you. These are all my circular needles. I have massive ones. These must be 20s at least. And I have some other pretty big ones. Oh, and here's a really pretty pair. These are 17s. Is that right? They're quite large. I have big bulky ones for making big loose things. These are... Hang on. I love this thing. This is this tells me what size my needles are. So these are these ones are elevens. I love these bamboo ones, and these are ten and a halfs. Look at the difference in in an eleven and a ten and a half. That's pretty significant. Anyway, um, but elevens will not do. They will not do. And then I have a whole bunch of smaller ones like, oh, I don't want my ten and a halfs to get lost in that bunch. Okay, so here's a whole bunch of smaller ones, and I just heard a pair fall on the floor. You know, I find these circular needles, I love working with them now. I used to hate them because I was used to straight needles, and now I love them. But they are the hardest things in the world. I cram them all into this little bag here. Um, this is my old knitting and crocheting bag. It's not very big, but uh, it has all these pockets on the inside. I'm used to it. Um, I was hoping, I love these needles. These are these ones, they're kind of like plasticky, and they're ever so slightly bendy. And I, I know I had a pair, I think they were white or maybe yellow also, of 10 and a half, but these are 11s. So I don't know what happened to my ten and a half straight. I know I had ten and a half straight needles. That I'm sure of because I have this funky uh, straight needle holder that um, has, and I had every single size of needle from a zero all the way up to a fifteen, I think. And my ten and a half spot is empty, so I've put them somewhere. Okay, so my back stitches are taken care of. The next thing that um, the pattern tells me to do is I'm going to start with this is my right hand sleeve I'm going to take these stitches off and put them onto my ten and a half needles and I'm not going to I'm not going to um, knit it in a tube because in order to do it in a tube this would have to be 16 inches long and it's more like I don't know 24 or 30 or something it's quite long and so I would never be able to get the tube on there and I don't have double pointed needles this size. All my double pointed needles are really intended for socks, so they're quite small. While I was digging around in the itty bitty knitting bag, um, wanting to show you, this is so pitiful. This is just classic for me. This is my box that I, my double pointed needles have been living in. Now, lest you think that I do this because I am so impoverished, I actually like old things. This I'm, this needs to be thrown in the trash. But the first ones that I ever, the first double point needles I ever found, I guess, that looks like my grandmother's handwriting, but I know it's not, uh, were in this box, and so I've used, and I've even taped it to make it live longer, but you know, I think it's time for it to go on to a better place. What do you think? <laughs> anyway. Oh, these are all these double pointed needles that I don't use because I hate knitting socks. Some people love knitting socks. Adam even made me a set of double pointed needles one year for Christmas. We really were quite poor at that time. This was years ago. And we didn't have, it was like a classic Christmas story or something. And we didn't have enough money for Christmas presents. And so he, he got a rod, a steel rod, and he made these from that and he actually tapered the ends and tried to get the ends just right for knitting and I was making socks and so that was his gift and that's sweet I've kept them but all the rest of these they're all oh I don't know size sevens and smaller anyway as I was looking in this bag and digging down to the bottom of it and getting rid of all of this mangle of 
circular needles. Look what I found. I'm so excited. I found, I found two ten and a halves. And I'm wondering if they're the right. This is 40 centimeters and this is 80. So these are long. I bet these are really short though. And I wonder if they're short enough to do the sleeves and then I could do the sleeves in the round. They look nice and short. Oh, those might even be really short. Okay, let's get out a tape measure. Oh, that's going to be perfect. 16 inches. All right, this is the set of double pointed that I need, of, of circulars that I need, which means I didn't need to take these off at all from the body. But you know, I don't care. That's okay. Um, so I'm going to start working on my sleeves using these lovely little needles. <gasps> All right. Well, I'll let you know when the sleeves progress. All right. We're having a fiber reconsideration day here. Um, I've been working on my sweater. I have knitted all of the old homespun that I have that's wool. Okay. And the sleeves are about halfway down. They're to the, um, What's that elbow? And and I would say I probably just have like maybe an inch or two left on the bottom. Not much of the of the body. But I don't have any more yarn. Okay. And so I think I have forgotten, but I think I'm gonna have to use this lovely fiber. Um it, it has already been blended as I showed you before. It looks kind of brown, but if you look at it closely, you see it's got all kinds of colors in there. There's some pinks and greens in there. I think it'll fit fine with the other. I can also incorporate very sparingly the last of my orange and my olive green, and that will help to tie it into the other. The problem is this. I don't want to have anything that's more scratchy, like this is a little more scratchy than the merino. I don't want to have it by my wrists, okay? And I lied when I said I had spun up all my old homespun because I do have some of that um, left that was going to be on the bottom of the body it has a lot of that soft blue in it. It's a lot softer than this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save that for the bottom of the wrists. Okay, so that it so that I'll have something softer on my wrists so that they don't itch. And I don't care. I don't care if the bottom of the body is scratchy or not. So I'm going to spin this up and combine it with some of this. Maybe even. See, I might end up needing this. It just, I really, I think I need some more for the sleeves too. I have a good bit of sleeve to go. And um, I think I, I think I need to, but I need to blend this with something. Something to make it look speckledy. I can't have it just be solid pink or it will look so strange <laughs> on those sleeves. So, um, yeah, it takes more yarn than you would think to knit a big bulky sweater like that. I had no idea. But I think it'll be a sweater I'll use for a long time. The other thing I can incorporate in there that might help is a little bit of this creamy white. Um, it will help give some complexity to that pink and even to the other as long as I use it very sparingly. So that's the next plan. So for the next two days, I'm gonna be carding and spinning and plying and washing um, so I can have some more yarn, so I can do some more knitting. <laughs> this is why people shop for yarn at yarn stores, so they don't have to do all this in order to knit. <laughs> I thought I would show you how um, this fiber is, is spinning up. This is what I want to finish the body with. This is the scratchy, um, oh, what's the name of that? I'll put it in a little word down here. I don't remember the name of, of what it's called. It is a very long staple. It is a little scratchier. It's also got some of the olive and some of the orange in there. But this stuff is actually, you see all those colors? It's like all the colors of the rainbow in there. Anyway, it doesn't look like much in the roll lag. But then look what it looks like when you spin it up. Isn't that pretty? The colors are really not showing up on my camera. Oh, you see my foot? 
they look too bright, like they're white or gray. But it's just a very beautiful autumn brown. Maybe I'll get a better picture of it and take a photograph of it. Hi friends! Well, it's a Saturday afternoon and I got something so exciting in the mail from FedEx. Big package this time. This is new fiber from the Spinnery store. Okay, and I want to show you what I bought and I want to tell you exactly how much I cost uh, it cost me because um, I think I think that their fiber is a really good deal. Um, a friend of mine who knows a lot about fiber and has ordered fiber from all over the place told me if you can get an ounce of finished fiber ready to spin, okay, in, in a long roving. Uh, for less than five dollars an ounce that you've done really well and I think these this is a really good deal and what I'm using what I need it for yes I'm still working on the sweater the sweater is turning out great I think it's gonna be big the neck is gonna be big for sure like I said before um, and it maybe end up being kind of wide it's hard to tell now but that's okay I don't mind if it's big I just don't want it small um, I need it to be longer than it is, but look how big it's getting to be. And this is the part I love. I wish the whole sweater looked like all of this down here. That's what I really like. Um, but I like the top too. The sleeves are right now just below the elbow. Okay. They also have some of that fun dark on there. I need to get something else on there. Um, and this probably, this has got some slightly lighter brown on the bottom. It's been lots of fun to blend all this and I'm sure I'll show you other video of that. The sweater is getting there but every time I stop because I'm out of yarn I have to make more yarn. I have to spin it and ply it and wash it and um and I, I was running out of fiber. So let me show you what we have in the package. Um, I might turn this down so that you guys can see what's on the table. Let's hope that camera doesn't fall over. Okay, I, I got a lot more fiber than last time. I got it in bigger, I don't think I got any one ounce ones. And I got a, a couple of repeats that you may see and then I got a lot of new colors. Um, oh wow, that looks nice. I like how they label everything so you know exactly what you're getting. I like an assortment of lights and darks so that there's contrast in the yarn that I make. I tend to like blue, I tend to like blues and pinks, and then I like burst of color in there. And if you're wondering where this is, it's the Spinnery store. Okay, there they are. They're in Pennsylvania, I believe. Jody Dominic is the lady who runs that, and her Gmail is jody.dominic at gmail.com. Okay, so let me show you the ones that are repeats. There's not many. I love that midnight. And when I looked at their, um, when I looked back at their website to order this, I looked for ones that specifically said super soft or very soft because this one was described as super soft. And believe me, it really was. So I know that when they say that, oh, they mean it. And I, I really wanted... Um, wow, that is so lovely feeling. That is so dark. I love, I love everything about this. And I love that it's solid. That means that I get to do the blending. Um, I did get some that were pre-blended. Man, that's, um, four ounces. That should last me a little while. Okay, let's see. This was ten ninety nine for four ounces, which tells me, I think that it was, uh, two ninety nine an ounce. What a great deal. The other thing that I used, I used some of it in all of the yarn that I spun. It was never the primary, but it was always in there. It was this orange. Um, it's called Flame. This, and I noticed how soft it was, and sure enough, that this is a four ounce package. I'm not gonna keep, put them back in there, so that doesn't matter. Love this stuff, isn't that beautiful? Um, mm -hmm. Um, also $10.99, so this was $2.99 an ounce, and I got four ounces of that. Now those are my two repeats, and then I got some new stuff. This was a fun one I got. This is in this little Ziploc. Now this I only got 
two ounces of. Again, I want this to be a, um, a little pop of additional color. I don't want it to really be the main thing. Isn't that beautiful? That's called Ultra Soft Daffodil 19.5 Micron Super Fine Merino Spinning Felting. Um, and for two ounces, this was $7.99, $8. So this one was like $3.99 um, an ounce, so a little bit more expensive, but still well under that price that I'm looking for. Okay, let's look at this one. I got four ounces of this one. Okay. Uh, this is pre-blended, but this is all undyed. Isn't that something? That is absolutely gorgeous. Now let's do a feel. See, I can feel, I don't know, those are really close. That blue is so soft. This is pretty soft too. Ultra soft. That is so pretty. And I would, see, I would add a little pop of something like the yellow to that, or maybe even a little bit of the orange to that. Um, you could even put something really dark like that dark blue. Um, wow. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's see what's next. Ah, oh, mahogany. Now I got a little bit of this because I think that it can be important to have a dark brown in there. Um, two, I got two ounces of this. This has been pre-blended though, but it, it's a very dark brown, but there's some blue, mahogany, brown, a little bit of teal or something in there too. This will be fun to put with something else. And all of these I can blend also with uh, the off-white that I have. I really went to town and ordered enough to keep me busy for a while. Last time I did not order enough, and before I knew it, I had used up all of my um, fiber, and I was quite sad. <laughs> so I was like, I don't want to be there again. I really wanted enough to keep me spinning through the fall, at least, I guess. Okay, this is four ounces of rose petal fiber. Oh, man, that is so nice. It doesn't say that it's super soft, but that feels so soft. It is a little deeper color than in the camera I'm looking at. It has kind of a bright pink look. It's actually more of a beautiful plum or cranberry. Mm. Wow. Look at these two together. Mm. Look at these two together. So much fun. Uh, what I've learned about blending colors is that you can take that your leftover dregs that you think don't really go together necessarily and aren't your favorite colors and you blend them and then you spin them and then you ply them and you look at the, resi the uh, resulting yarn and it's gorgeous. <laughs> oh, this is prettier than I expected. This More, it's a little bit closer to a teal than what I'm seeing in the camera right now. Mmm, that is so pretty. You can see that with that see it with that. Actually what I usually end up doing is just blending a whole, you know, four, at least four, sometimes five colors together. Um, whatever I feel like doing. Okay, what have I not done so far? I did the rose petal. Okay, here's a little bitty. I did just get one ounce of this. This is a more of a pale summer color. Um, I didn't know if it would really, uh, I didn't want it to dominate any of my fall uh, spinning, but it might be a nice little contrasting light color in there when all the rest of them are very, very deep. Some of these are really some pretty serious jewel tones. If you look at some of the deep colors I've got going on, um, they're quite strong. So it can be nice to have a contrast of something like this that's um, gentler. This is Soft Salmon Merino. That's all it says. And it was, this was $3.29 for an ounce, so a little pricier, but again, still way under the $5 mark. Um, now, this is fun. This is Soft, Deep, Bitter Chocolate Merino. I don't think they mean that literally. Oh, this is chocolate. Mmm, that's beautiful. It looks more blacky gray in the camera. I think it's Boy, that's pretty though. It's it's a very deep, rich chocolate brown. I love that. And boy, I'm just laying these colors on each other and seeing how they look. All right, last one. This was a, this was one of my last choices. This I got two ounces of. This is another Ashland Bay fiber, soft pine, Ashland Bay merino evergreen. 
Warm, Earthy Nature Green. This is two ounces for $5.99, so it's about $2.99. Yeah, very fun color. There's a little bit more blue in it, or a little darker again than it, oh wow, that's gonna go great with some of these other colors. I really don't think there's any of these colors that don't go well together. I didn't spend a huge amount of time choosing them. I really tend to go on my gut. And so when I am, yeah, when I'm looking at them, I ponder, I look at which ones really appeal to me. I know the ones that don't appeal to me. And then I just choose the ones that do. Um, and I assume that they're gonna go together. All right, there is my fiber haul this time. And I'll be keeping you apprised of uh, what I spend with. But in the end, I just end up putting a lot of them together and who knows what I come up with. I do need to finish the sweater though. And the sweater is going to have more of the blue and a little bit. Actually, I still have some of this that I can put in there. And um, maybe a little of this. I used to use some cranberry-ish. Maybe even a little of the green would be a good idea. So um, don't have too much of the sweater to go. Once I get the yarn made, the knitting goes pretty fast. It's just a matter of getting that yarn made. The longest thing I have to wait on is for it to dry after I wet finish it. Um, that takes like overnight. Okay, well, thanks for joining me for that fun. Wasn't that great? I hope that you order from the spinnery store. I don't, this is not an advertisement for them. They don't pay me anything for this. I'm just telling you that it's a business that um, I really like. They do a great job, fast shipping. I think it was here in two days. So um, anyway, give them a look. Thanks, bye. Thanks so much for sticking with me to the end. Have a great day. Please leave a comment below if you'd like to. I'd love to hear from you. And if you enjoyed this channel, I'd love it if you would subscribe so I can see you here again. If you liked this particular video, then please click the thumbs up button, uh, which tells me that you really like this particular content. There's also a little bell down there that will help you get notifications every time a new video comes out on my channel. Thank you.